it's a labor of love. I mean, we just, I, I complain sometimes of all the work that gets put into this, but it is well worth it when you see these old movies and these wonderful concerts and people just having so much fun and enjoying themselves. It's, it, it made that three and a half years worthwhile. <laughs>
July 13th, we have The Adventures of Robin Hood, the original 1938 Adventures of Robin Hood movie. There's a matinee show at 2 o'clock and there's another show at 7 o'clock. We keep it nice and cool in here, so if you want to get out of the heat, come in and watch a movie. All Quiet on the Western Front is coming August 23rd. 24th. 24th. August 24th. <laughs> so with that one, we're going to do some a little exhibit in the lobby here, bringing in a lot of original artifacts. So it's going to be a, a really cool movie. It was one of the first realistic war movies, if not the first realistic war movie ever produced. And uh, it takes place from the German perspective. So, but it's a universal perspective of, of warfare. So it was shot in 1929, which is the year that the museum down the road portrays. And, uh, but it was released in 1930 and won all kinds of awards. So great. we're excited about that one as well. I know in October, the first two, I believe it's Tuesdays or Wednesdays, I think Tuesdays, we have uh, Frankenstein. Wednesdays. Wednesdays, we have Frankenstein, the original Frankenstein from the 1930s. And then the third and fourth Wednesdays, we have Bride of Frankenstein. We tried this out last year with Dracula. Actually, that was probably our first movies with yeah. you guys was Dracula. And we had two show. We had a showing and it sold out. So we did a showing again the next week or two weeks later and it sold out. So this time we decided to do showings every week in October, every every Wednesday in October. So I hope everybody can make it out. Yeah. So why don't we take a tour? Sure. The popcorn machine is from the late 40s, but we do have one picture from the outside and a model exactly like the same model, manly popcorn machine, you can see through the window. So that is just like what was here, probably came in new in the late 40s, early 50s. This light fixture is 19, from 1918. That was a real challenge to restore. It had, I'm guessing, at least a dozen coats of paint on it. We totally stripped it down, had all the brass repolished and everything. Very heavy fixture, beautiful fixture. We're still trying to get, and I think we will get information on what what theater that this, this did originally come out of the theater. We're just not sure which one. We're working on getting the history on that. The, our poster cases on the wall are original. Uh, they were totally redone and my wife hand painted it. Um, Several of them, the whole bottoms were rotted off of, and we had to have them totally rebuilt. But the guys did a great job of them. Were these in like a back storage room when you bought the building? When we bought the building, these were in a storage area downtown, and we went and were able to pull them out there. It was a very damp storage area, and things were in really bad shape. And we didn't know if we could save these, but we were able to. We were able to save them. And then uh, back, back. When movies came out, you'd get movie posters that they put in here, and you'd get another thing called, I believe they called them half sheets, or they also had some called lobby cards. And these cases, there's some cases over here that match the ones that are on the wall. These are where the lobby cards would go in, and they would advertise movies that were coming up in the future. So, as you can imagine, for a building that sat nearly 50 years unoccupied when we bought it, the ceiling had been leaking. Um, there was a false ceiling underneath the truss, trusses, these white trusses, and we had no idea when we bought the building what was above that ceiling. And when we pulled the ceiling out to redo it and saw the beautiful architecture in here, we decided we just could not cover that up. So. We left it all open. We put our insulation on the outside of the roof with a brand new membrane roof. And it's it just came out so wonderful. These light fixtures, we had three of these that came with the theater. These fixtures are from the 1930s out of the Brookside Theater. Um, the Brookside Theater, I believe, had a fire and they shut down. But anyway, the guy we bought it from had ended up with the light fixtures. These are, that's three more light fixtures we totally redid. Lots of painting, lots of polishing. My wife hand polished all the brass on them. Everything, everything in the theater is LED lighting, 
all the old bright fixtures have been rewired to LED lighting, super efficient. Sconces on the walls, uh, the two small ones in the middle are, are original, not original of this theater, but those are original sconce fixtures. The four medium sized ones are reproductions and three, I'm sorry, one of the three big ones is a reproduction. The other three are original and the fourth one I built. Hmm. It looked like the other three. For the seats uh, we got were originally kind of a red velour. We got some seats with the theater. They came out of the Plaza Theater and some of them came out of the Crown Center Theater. We had them all redone. We went with the ones with uh, cup holders. They are they are reclining. One of the, of course, in any project, you look at you look at ways to save money, and it was. I, I won't tell the dollar amount, but it was a lot of money to put this fabric on the wall. So we purchased the fabric. I started in the corner, and after about three days, I had gone about eight feet so I decided that something this was not going to work out so well so my wife came in helped me we figured out a system and between Bruce and I and my wife we hung all this fabric it took 19 days and somewhere between 25 and 30,000 staples electric staples in a staple gun and you're still married and we are still married. And my <laughs> wife came up with the system to hang it, and it just it helped immensely. Uh, 1927 is is when this Mission Theater was built, and so it's it's funny how back in the 20s, popular culture affected society. You know, you went to a Mary Pickford movie, and you noticed Mary Pickford had short hair, so women all over the country started getting their hair cut short. It, we kind of follow Hollywood fashion today. Well, they certainly did in the 1920s. And they had a lot less to compete for with their attention. They didn't have these things in the 20s. They had newspapers, they had magazines, and they had movies. And uh, the movie theaters where you not only saw your feature film, but you saw your newsreel. And that's where they kept up on what was going on over in Europe and the Pacific during World War II. You know, those, those, those news reels. So they came here to socialize, they came here to cool off in the summertime because nobody had air conditioning in their home. Mm -hmm. uh, but the movie theater often did, and this place did. And they'd catch up on their news, they catch, and then they would forget about the problems. Being in the Depression or World War II, they forget about the problems for an hour and a half. So movie theater played a really big part in society, uh, even bigger than it does now. now. We've been told, now we haven't been proven wrong yet, but I don't know where to do the research, but we were told that this theater was the first air conditioned building in Johnson County. And it was done originally, I believe, by blocks of ice and air, but it was air conditioned building. There is a, a uh, basement underneath the stage and there's a original cistern, 12 or 14 foot brick line cistern down there that's spring fed, that's it's full all the time you know the summers we were working on this in droughts it was full and spring fed and I think that may have been their water system in here at the time well thank you very much for your time today Chris sure we appreciate it thank you it's been a wonderful partnership working with you